Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are going to make a wreath. Pick your favorite flowers or foliage and little accents and get your wreath formed. Today I'm using a grapevine wreath, but you can use one that you could wrap in fabric or moss or anything like that. I'm also using a ribbon for a bow, so we'll make a bow in this tutorial. This is about five yards or 15 feet. And then now I've popped off and taken all my um, main flowers and cut the extra off and even sort of cut off the extra access area and then reinforced a little bit with glue behind it just in case they pop off. And then we cut some extra foliage off of the leaves instead of having all that extra wire sticking out. Now I'm just laying out my wreath and I've got something to protect it behind so when I get my hot glue out it won't ruin my table underneath. This wreath is for my sister and I had her with me and I arranged it in the way that she wanted. I put a couple of layouts together and this is what she decided on. So now we're just gonna use our glue gun. You can use a hot or low melt. Just watch your fingers if it's too high and add in that extra glue there. Have some extra sticks on hand. And really I'm just uh, gluing the back of them. I glued in some main flowers and then the ones that were a little smaller, I kind of nestled them in between. If you need a little bit of reinforcement, you may have to add a dab of glue behind any of them. They're a little weak. This particular one gets a little weak behind it, so you could add a little bit of glue in there like that. And just stick it in. You want to hold it in until it uh, sets. And uh, after everything's dried, you want to kind of give a tug on some of your uh, flowers and things just to make sure that it's not going to fall out. And just continue gluing everything on your wreath. If you notice, I left a space toward the top, and that's where my bow is going to um, is going to stay there. So continue gluing all those on, and then grab your foliage and berries and whatever accents you want, and just start nestling them in between your main flowers. So you start with your main flowers and design, and then add in your accents if you have any. Finish gluing everything in as you need, and then we'll start making a bow. I'll meet you back in a moment. To make a wire bow, you're gonna need some wire ribbon, and just note how much you have. You need at least five yards to make a bow like this one, and if you want more tails, you're probably gonna have a little bit more. You're gonna roll up and do a loop in the middle and pinch it with your non-dominant hand. So I'm using my left hand to pinch it, and then I pinch and twist it and make a first loop with my right hand, which is my dominant hand, and then I pinch and twist it right in the middle and I keep holding it with my left hand, and then I flip it to the other side to um, get the um, other loop to match it, and then I hold them up and kind of measure it out with my fingers, and then I twist it and pinch it in the middle. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm making the right side or the pretty side on the outside. Now this is a burlap and if you have a hard time holding on to it then you may have to use a series of pipe cleaners or something to kind of build it up. But this is a method that I've always used. It's a very popular craft method to make a bow. I do have a slower tutorial on how to make a bow but this is how I made this one with the burlap and you'll see how it kind of stacks up on me because of the thickness and you see me measure out when I want a larger loop I kind of measure downward and then you can see that those are about the same length and then I start kind of stacking my loops here so I'm um, folding them over making sure the loops match and then I twist it and pinch it and when I'm pinching it with my left I'm just continuing to hold all the loops together and I just continue on until I have the right amount of loops and I'm gonna keep going. So I'm pinching and twisting. I've got on the top side, on each side, I've got two smaller ones. You could do maybe three if you want. And then so far I've got three larger stacks behind them. And I'm just gonna go and put in another couple on there. So I've got four on each side. And um, depending on who you are, you might call this say a, um, a, let's see what is this one two three four five six a 12 loop bow that means it's got six on each side and so now I have the choice of making a long tail or a short tail and if I make a short tail then maybe I can add some long in later and I'm gonna go ahead and make it short because I asked my sister she's right off to the side and this is what she chose stick my pipe cleaner through the middle or chenille stick craft stick whatever you want to call it bend it around to the back and keep pinching and holding that. And then you're gonna pinch and hold and twist it as super tight as you can. You can also use other floral wire. I like to use the chenille stick because 
it's not as hard on my fingers. It's really soft. And then I try and match the ribbon as much as I can, or I try and match the thing that I'm attaching it to, the primary color. And then I can tie it on so that it can be removed later, or I can glue it on. In this case, we have decided to um, make it a more permanent solution and she won't be switching the bows out. So what I'm gonna do here is start pulling and twisting the sides outward and I have to kind of hold on tight in that middle because I don't want the loops to shift to the opposite side. Now if they do, it's not that big of a problem. I can still kind of sort of shimmy and pull it to the other side, but I really prefer them to stay right in the middle because if you start kind of pulling and twisting too much, then you might have a mess and have to start the whole thing over again. Of course, I've done this many times and so I don't have that issue, but um, if you use a ribbon that is really slippy, like it's very, um, it's a very slippery ribbon, then it might have that problem. This one is pretty bulky, so it's going to be harder to do. Now, in this case, I'm actually flattening the bow out. See how it's kind of flattened and sort of modern looking. Um, my sister doesn't like the big round fluffy, and so that's what we're doing here. And then I'm actually making this middle loop smaller. I'm kind of pulling it through that ribbon and and the um the wire to make it very small and then i'm flattening it down because that's the style that she wanted and so i can just make that change and adjust it you see how i'm kind of pulling and tweaking it as i go that's totally okay it doesn't mean you have to start the whole bow again and so you can twist and pull that and even cut off the excess if you want and then i'm gonna kind of smash and flatten it down and um, make it how she wants it okay So we're just gonna keep fluffing it out and then I'll meet you back when we put it on. So I swirled up that pipe cleaner in the back and now I'm adding a bunch of glue to it. I'm gonna put that on the back of the bow and a little bit on my wreath and just kind of hold that down for a few minutes. And now we're just playing with some extra scrap uh, flowers if we wanna do it in a different spot and decided really just to add a touch of foliage here and have them coming out of the other flower. They're not coming out on the bow because it's more natural coming out of the flowers. And so that's just where we did it to finish off this particular one. You could of course weave in some extra ribbon or perhaps hang a very long ribbon for your hanger instead of hanging this directly on the hook. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. I would love to see yours posted on the Good Knit Kisses page. I hope you have a great day and happy crafting. Be sure to subscribe and comment below. Bye-bye.